I got 12 o'clock, should we start? All right, number one, meeting order. We're in for order. Previous uh, meeting minutes. Questions, changes? I heard Zerlin look, I thought they looked good. I'll motion to approve. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number three, quarterly financial report. Are all the loans on time? Um, as far as I know, I yeah. haven't heard anything from Jan. Any questions on the financials? business has but if it was on the yeah. building itself they're still landlords they're okay. still in business of renting the building oh, so okay not that's a big deal I'm great like, no I can I can look into that and um, see what the situation is okay. anything else What was our available balance for uh, for what we have left to be able to lend? I think that was good in back. Uh, we don't have it. We don't have it. Yeah, because right right okay. yeah, that was one thing I asked for. Oh, right, for small cities. That's what it was. Yeah. So the yeah. funds, I think some of the funds sit with us, and then as yeah. um, some grad needs them, they'll do the Take job. It. Okay, got it. I have a motion to approve quarterly financials. So moved. Second. I second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number four, coordinators report. Okay. Um, fairly brief this month. I met with Karen Ducharme, who's running the Small Cities Development Program in Jackson. Um, they've started taking applications. Um, uh, cabin Coffee. Um, I've been looking around for properties that kind of fit their bill, but um, it's not looking very good because I, people are either asking too much <coughs> or they're just aren't um, the kind of properties they're looking for. So um, I attended the One Million Cups, um, which is pretty interesting. It was an agricultural business focus. Um, and then I went to the David Sengem Heldman event in Chatfield, the Communities Using Energy as an Economic Driver event, and that was really interesting on how um, cities can use um, energy creation as an economic driver. So, you know, they might do some things looking in the future for Cashin. <coughs> um, the city of Cashin has received their reimbursement from MnDOT. <coughs> Um, the business facade improvement grant, um, Trail Creek Coffee sign has been installed. I have not uh, received a request for reimbursement yet. I'll probably reach out to them and see where they are with that. Um, we've received two applications, um, which we'll review shortly. And the revolving loan fund, I've completed the draft for the guidelines and policy. Um, we'll also be reviewing that shortly. And then the quarterly financial report for October was included in this packet. So what what particularly is uh, Gavin Coffee looking for a property? Um, they want, um, you know, as they describe it, an AM side. So in Cashin that would be 
southbound on 57 and mm -hmm. eastbound on Veterans. Um, those are kind of the really two main corridors. So they were looking for kind of the driving, the busy side, and then a drive-through location. Um, we looked at the Quick Trip, but um, I was in contact with their property manager, and he said that they're going to move forward with raising that building and turning it into a long haul truck stop. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I figured. Fernbrook, we looked just north of the new Fernbrook, and the property line, it's, it's half still Pranty Real Estate and half is now Ron Carlson, so that's not really viable at the moment because they're looking to sell Shopko and kind of losing property might, might not be, a small portion too might not be very interesting of high interest for them. Sure. Um, and let's see, the the old images building too, mm -hmm. um, that one I think is um, expensive um, and large. a little large and it would need some, you know, Getting remodeling. Out there, right. Right. Through these kinds mm -hmm. of friendly. Mm -hmm. there. And then yeah. another one we looked at was the, uh, the Struthers residence. Um, oh. on the corner of Casey's, mm -hmm. but the asking price for that is too high as well. Okay. So, keeping my eyes out and okay. hopefully something comes up and I'll definitely Perfect. keep them in mind. Is there any room kind of by the Domino's where the Fernbrook used to be? Um, yeah. They looked at that because the old Fernbrook is for lease, but that space is too small That's and they'd have to and the situation there is there's uh, somebody who wants to own the property and lease the cabin coffee. Oh. And so. And I suppose they want to detach so they could have a drive through. Right. It's and easier the property's for lease, not for sale. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Number five business, business facade. Let's go around. So we've got two applications. Um, I'll go over the first one. Um, so Erdman's, they want to recover their whole ca um, canopy. canopy, yep, and then install LED lights. Um, project cost is around $31,500, and so the matching grant request would be 2000 I think this is a, a really nice looking project. Um, mm -hmm. It'll help with make the building look a lot nicer and the lighting will be good. And then we also have um, James Borgson. Dares submitted a project for painting um, the fence in front of the uh, empty lots on Main Street. I think that'd be, fits with the program guidelines now and mm -hmm. be an interesting project to see on Main Street. Erdman's looking to do kind of the same as what they have now? I believe so. They didn't have any um, kind of renderings. Yeah, this is remove and recover, web surgery, it's a lot of time. Looks like the same thing. So I think the like the underlying structure that holds up the, the current canopy will probably remain. I'll make a motion to approve both projects. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Okay. Number six, revolving loan fund update. So I don't know if any of you kind of looked through this. Um, I made it to be a fairly um, comprehensive guidelines and policy document so that it might be a little easier to kind of chop away it or what you don't want and and then we can also see what what things you want to change and then um, my plan is to take in um, the input at this meeting and bring forth the finalized version to the next meeting with the supporting documents like the application and uh, anything else that needs to be included with it. So I've highlighted the areas that I think um, probably just want to draw your attention to whether we want to include them or not, or decide on certain terms and things like that. 
So I guess if we want to start, um, some of my first questions would be, has anybody read it or? I read through it once. Okay. Through. Any initial comments or? Oh, the good, good things to think about that we can see what everybody has okay. to say about it. So All right. So the first highlight thing is, um, do we want to do limited working capital financing? Um, maybe Tom can speak sure. um, better to some of these sure. terms than I can. Sure. I, I mean, in terms of the working capital, so that's, you know, so I mean, generally on a commercial lending deal, I'm, we're not going to be unless they're an existing customer that we had for a long time and they have an operating cycle that requires some, you know, some gap, fin like some operate operating financing from us, we're not going to be interested in like startup working capital mm -hmm. for, for things. We're just not, it's usually a space where you want to see some kind of capital infusion from the ownership. Um, now there's, I, I think having a limited, uh, a limited space for that is going to be fine here as long as we define how we're limiting it. Well, yeah, we could cap it at like, you know, 5,000, 2,500. Yeah, and I, and I guess I would say maybe like, may, maybe we say we'll, we'll do 50% of, or one month's worth of operating costs, you know, like define it in, in that way somehow. Because mm -hmm. I mean, for some people, you know, $5,000 might get them through a day, and others right. 5,000 might last them for six months. I don't it just depends yeah, you know, every business can be different, but I think the point is we want them we want ownership to have stake in the game, skin in the game, and we want um, we want to help but not uh, it's kinda like I don't know, it's kinda like what Bill Gates talked about with his kids. He wants to give them enough money they can do anything, but not enough money they can't they could do nothing. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Uh so I think I think if we just if we if we specified you know like we'll, we'll finance mm -hmm. one month worth of you know defined working capital or or fifty percent of two months working capital or something I don't know so whatever I, that's all I would define it somewhere in that realm that we could keep it as limited working capital financing and then have a better definition of what our limits are right further on in the document because you gotta have a limit because otherwise. Working capital is one of the toughest loans to get as a business owner, and it would be the toughest loan to give. Mm -hmm. Because you'd have to have some pretty good forecasted numbers. And if I'm going to loan you 5000 for your inventory this month, right. you better be turning some widgets. Otherwise, right. you, now you have a whatever the term of the loan is going to be. A yeah. year, if it's an inventory loan, to pay for one month's inventory, mm -hmm. either it works or it doesn't work, and then somebody's left holding the bag at the right. end of the day. So. And, um, no problem with it, but some kind of limits have to be there. Yeah. So I can work on this, and mm -hmm. then I guess um, I should also say that then I can work through November with the loan review committee on hammering out kind of the specific numbers we might want to see on such right. limits as that. Okay, um, and do we want to function as a guarantor to conventional bank loans? I, I mean, I, I think I would be, I, I think if I had somebody come in and, you know, had a commitment from the EDA to provide a, you know, I, I wouldn't just say like, I, I don't know that we should do like 100% guarantee, but I would say we should have, again, you might want to say like, we'll provide a, a, you know, up to, up to a 50% or up to a 30% guarantee up to this dollar amount. Mm -hmm. um, and then you might want to specify where, you know, does that amount go down as they pay off the loan? You know, for example, is it is it 30% of outstanding principal balance or is it 30% of the origination amount? Um, so I, I would suggest scaling it down just so that we could stop, we, we could reduce the amount of money we have locked up. Um, yeah. But as a, you know, I don't know. I, I, think, I, I think that would be, of interest to me as a, you know, if I had somebody that needed that, I, I would, I think that would be very, very helpful. So we could, you know, same thing as the capital financing, keep it limited. And with this document, since it is our revolving loan fund, we can amend it to whatever terms we see fit. 
at any right. time. So we can see, you know, do people use this? Is it working? If not, we can change it. So, are we are we able to have in addition to the guidelines and policies, um, like a separate underwriting standards document? I don't know. I mean, if that's yeah, we could. I mean, that could be one of the other documents included. You know, if that's where you want to go, then we have a different form for that, and you know, with rules too. Yeah, because I I think. You know, there's kind of like a set of processes you're supposed to go through on, on updating your loan policy. Um, but if you know, if it's going to be something as simple as maybe we change the the amount we're spread you know, we're spreading from Wall Street Prime or if we're I don't know whatever. I I think it could be helpful. I don't feel strongly about that, but I just think it could be helpful for the separate amount, but. Sorry. Do do we still have a loan committee? Define loan committee. Rich and Chris. Chris. Uh, National loan committee. Like Rich then? I think so. Yeah. We haven't had any loans come up, so. But right. were there any <laughs> underwriting guidelines for that never part of it? Okay. Never had to. I mean, I think we haven't had a loan application since I've been on. It's <laughs> 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 You know, we could change people, could add people. I don't yeah. think. I don't think it's a, ver a rigid committee in terms of yeah. rules. And well, I was more more concerned if there were actual any underwriting guidelines oh. for that mm -hmm. committee. Like just the eligibility and then the financials. And I mean, I don't know if there was anything written. I don't, I've never seen anything. I think, yeah, they just review the loans mm -hmm. to kind of screen them for the EBA and, and give a recommendation. Right. Rich would probably know if there was something, if somebody's been quite a while yeah. reviewing the loans, so yeah. I wouldn't be hit, would hurt to have some type of guidelines to go by right. as you have <coughs> change over and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, moving on <laughs> then, um, the next one at the bottom of the page and moving on to page two, do we want to um, allow non-profit applicants to apply for revolving loan funds, you know, contingent they have a firm revenue for repayment? I would and say it, yes. If it's and it brings economic development. Right. If it's mm -hmm. like a, a daycare that's going to operate as a nonprofit. Right. You know, there's benefit to the community. It's run like a business. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep that in there. Um, and then this one, I guess it's, you know, how do we want to break down how big a gap that we'll cover with the revolving loan funds? I believe this is what we had before. So this, I mean, so basically, this is this is basically what the SBA 504 structure is, which is okay. like a you know 50% conventional financing, 40% gap finding financing, 10% equity. Mm -hmm. I mean, one other thing you could say is um, if, you know, I, I don't know if there'd be like a time when, say, I had somebody come in to the bank for, I don't know, $5,000 for s starting up some kind of little widget business, and I said, I'm not going to do that. Um, could a person deny for conventional financing come and apply for some portion of that? something to think about it's I mean it kind of depends you know like that it just kind of depends I, mm -hmm. I think um, I, I've just I've seen other I've had other EDAs where they've said yes we want to we're, we're open to considering considering the full amount if or more than 40 percent if it if they've been denied for conventional financing um, but you know sometimes they're you, you get into it and it's like, well, I see why they were denied for conventional financing, but other times it might just be, um, you know, it, it might just, 
it might be they they just weren't I don't know they they were doing something that like if it was going to be purely inventory maybe it wasn't the, the bank just wasn't interested in doing that I don't know and there could be some you know guideline like um, if denied for conventional financing we can you know move above that forty percent but at a certain dollar limit. Okay, um, and then down to interest rates. So I kind of have two different directions we could go with this. Um, we could keep, you know, fixed interest rates, and if you know it changes over time, the EDA can amend them, or we could keep them um, moving with U.S. prime rate. There is a risk that it, you know, if prime goes to one percent, and we're looking at negative interest here, but we can always just not. You can put a floor on the interest, a minimum interest rate of X. Right. Right. You could say right. you know, one over so prime, prime or one less or whatever it is with a minimum rate. No of lower than four. Mm -hmm. Right, no lower than whatever. You say, yeah, you know, that would protect you on the negative interest rate thing. We don't want to go there. Right. Um, so I think that I kind of like the prime way because it it's more up to date. You know, when you're working on, say, we're working on a loan three years from now and Prime's changed, right. but mm -hmm. and then you work on a loan two months later and Prime's changed, but it right. it allows the EDA to keep up to date with those and well, it takes away the whole need for discretion of what how did you pick the interest rate for this person versus this person? It's right. hey, we're tied to Prime with a minimum of this as the economic conditions fluctuate. That's where interest rates go. It keeps it in line with your sixty percent private mm -hmm. finance is going to be tied to some Prime rate plus something for the. Banking institution you get it from too. So, I, my opinion would be somehow tied to prime with a minimum floor of. Mm -hmm. what would it be? Okay, I think I, I think that's I think that's good. Okay. Um, and then the the terms and the the length of those terms for each el eligible use. So one eligible use I um, wanted to draw your attention to is for tourism projects. Um, Do we still need that? <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> that was in there? It, it this was is the current. Um, some of this is current. Some of this is drawn from other revolving loan funds. Um, and so I just threw that in there because I saw it in one of them or a couple of them and I thought, you know, it's worth considering, but you know, it's hard to to imagine what a tourism project applying for gap financing might be. I don't know, buying a trolley bus, a you know, a roller coaster theme park. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really know. I guess if I I don't know what tourism project wouldn't fall into one of the other categories. Say yeah, like yeah. Kind of no, equipment. Equipment. talk about it more. It'd be a site or a building or okay. a new or machinery. Mm -hmm. So I can probably just take that out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, working capital and mm -hmm. inventory. Um, put limits on those. Working So working capital says in parentheses inventory, inventory. and yeah. then we have inventory. I think that might have been a, a typo on my part. Oh, okay. So should we have working inventory included with working capital or do we want to have a separate And, and I would, I guess, I would say, depending on what we mean by working capital, five-year financing terms might be a little long on working capital. Yeah, I mean, I, okay. could, I look at a service business working capital versus the manufacturing working capital for inventory. I mean, I, I like the inventory at one year maximum. Okay, right. That's a long time to finance inventory for, but if that's what it takes to get you over that first sales cycle, okay. Yeah. But working capital for a service business. Well, I wouldn't want to borrow a dollar a day and pay it back over five years mm -hmm. to operate my business day to day. Right. That's a long time to. Right. You know. Yeah, I guess unless they're, unless we're talking about permanent working capital, which is a different calculate. But I, I think, I don't think that's what we're meaning here. No. I think I it's the one-time push to get you started or going. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay. So change that to one year. Yeah, you know, because if it's going to be something else, and I know some people consider computer equipment to be working capital because they replace it every two years, then it would fall within the machinery you can always pay it off early. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I would keep the working capital. And so do we want to keep working <coughs> capital brackets inventory? Yeah, you could combine that working capital slash inventory. Slash inventory. Depends on the business type when right. they apply for what they're doing with it. Okay. Um, and then one for the machinery equipment, um, you know, one stipulation could be that it, the remaining effective life on equipment must be equal to, or say, you know, because you don't want to give a seven year loan on equipment that lasts two years. Um, but uh, Nancy kind of brought up, well, who would? Verify the length of that mm -hmm. equipment as a lifetime. No, you can use the IRS to find usable life okay. tables if you want. If you wanted to have something like that, they every piece of equipment has the has a usable life. The usable so life and depreciation. Just write that into the language. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, ineligible uses. So one thing that Nancy brought up was, do we want construction or maintenance of utilities? to be <coughs> eligible or ineligible, because that could mean, you know, the business uh, needs to, to jackhammer the sidewalk to replace, you know, a, a door or a facade or something. Would they be eligible to apply for, you know, money to, to remake that sidewalk or? Would that be site improvement? I guess so, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then on the other spectrum, you know, do you want to be financing what could be private utilities? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. If it's a product, I'm just thinking when we've bought the dry store, we had to move all the meters out to the alley upstairs. And But could that be also site improvement? Kind of building we consider it as a building renovation that they yeah. wanted something that had to be done. If somebody wanted to do that, then it would just come into, I guess, what would somebody for a private utility, if somebody had a, I guess, what's, what, what is the concern about it being a private utility? Yeah, yeah I, I guess I don't know what the, because everything else we're financing yeah. is a private. I mean, this was one that I didn't there. really know where to put it. Um, I think it can be, if it involves a utility, it's still an improvement or a renovation that more than likely if it involves utility has to be done. Mm -hmm. If we couldn't have got financing somewhere else, we could have come to EDA for right. moving those utilities. That it, was, it wasn't a question of if, it was you had to do it by this date. Mm -hmm. So I whether guess it's private or public, it just doesn't, it's still private property. Right. I guess the so only other thing I can think of would be like if, uh, the Fernbrook building people came in and wanted to put solar panels on their roof. And I guess I don't feel strongly opposed to an application like that. I don't. So I mean that. I, I guess I don't. Know, I don't know what utility. But would, would that be a building? Right. I, I think. Site improvement. Yeah. Right. I, I think once we get into the whole. I, I'm not sure if we what we mean is you can't finance your property assessment. You like assessments on your property. Like if that's what we mean. In which case, then I would just say, we're not going to finance, uh, you know, basically the same as pay delinquent taxes, which is to say we're not going to finance uh, do you know payable or, or delinquent property assessments. So we could just eliminate that and kind of see how it works, because it sounds like most of the projects would go under site improvement or building renovation. I would think so. Okay. Unless whoever, wherever that was at, maybe that town had an incident where they, yeah. I just can't think of. There's a stretch of pipe between where yeah. they needed to get in. Yeah, so what would be the. Okay. Um, highlight. Oh, um, covenants. Um, it's kind of the last section I highlighted. Um, these are kind of new to me, but I think. Somebody, one of my friends who works in the finance community, 
you know, said you might want to include covenants, things that kind of reaffirm certain aspects of the guidelines, but you know, more clearly and and it allows the EDA to say, you know, if they broke one of these covenants, it allows us to kind of reassess whether we want to recall the loan. Gives us more flexibility if a negative situation might might occur. Mm -hmm. No, 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 Tom, do you feel use covenants? Yeah, I mean, it, so it dep I mean, co covenants is just uh, just means you're including terms in a loan agreement. So I mean, it depends on the covenants. I mean, like you could have good covenants and bad covenants. So right, I think most of these are good covenants, affirmative. Yeah, I guess I I didn't because um, we're. Where are the, where are we looking? I, and I mean, affirmative covenants just means you're gonna, you're gonna cause something to happen, and negative covenants means you're just gonna cause some, you're gonna make sure something does not happen. So, for example, oh, causing okay. something not to happen would be, um, just like you're not gonna be delinquent, okay. or like you're, you're not gonna get a, I don't know, an IRS tax lien filing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I, I think, um, I, I guess I haven't even, I haven't read these covenant, uh, proceeds, tax tax items, terms, insurance, borrower, additional party, um, I, I guess, um, we could amend these too. Yeah, I you know I mean, with some of these, I, I guess some of these are they're good. It's it's a question of, for example, are we are we intending to then pull flood certifications on real estate loans now? Like with like that's under uh, point D mm -hmm. I I. Um, I I would. Um, but, um, Would I guess one other one is I don't know what requiring a CPA audit on every like if we do a loan for thirty five hundred dollars yeah or so you know I don't mm -hmm. know if like we're gonna need to require a CPA audit on that but I would say it's financials fi financials that correlate to the degree of investment we have because uh, if we have a I don't know if, if we if we put in over fifty percent of our money into something then I guess I would like to have maybe at least uh, you know CPA reviewed financials or something but I yeah, don't know because right, for, for to have an actual right. audit you're, you're talking adding more of a burden for the cost right and typically unless it's I mean, six figures high right. you know mid to high six figures is right the audits aren't required for hardly anything I mean, you want right. any financial statements right. yeah exactly so I would say I, I would say like we, we would like to have their maybe like their federal tax returns mm -hmm. some like at the end of the year like just to make sure they're in good compli compliance yeah. and right because that's the other thing is we have these covenants I'll, I'll make this similar to what we're going through with our conditional use permits mm -hmm. so we can issue somebody a loan and say hey here's the covenants to it and unless we have a system to follow up that are they Meeting mm -hmm. all these, we can make them a little. It's hard easier. to do. Ten years from now, all of a sudden, somebody comes and says, "Hey, you're not doing number one. Well, I haven't done number one for mm -hmm. eight years yet." Right. right. So if we're going to have it, then we need to have the annual checklist to say, "Hey, it's time to right. simple." You know, so when we issue a loan, borrower, here's your burden. You know, each year we're going to want a copy of this, 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 this as part of your loan agreement. You know, to make sure you're in compliance with stuff. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything if we don't. Right. Right. We can have the covenants, but we don't do anything year to year. We also need the people to do the oversight. Right. So I, I, I guess one other, once we get into that, then we probably need to have something in our policy about how we handle the confidentiality then of that information. So for example, if somebody gives us a tax return, um, we probably should not be reviewing people's full unredacted tax returns in a public meeting submitted to public record because now all of a sudden their social security number is subject to public record. And, and part of that too would be, we're just thinking as a, a 
business and in the tax world, I mean, not everybody on this board and commission is going to even know what to look at in some of the mm -hmm. corporate partnership right. tax terms and understanding what they're looking at. What so I don't, that might even be reaching too far. It could be maybe that could be may require a federal tax return under certain circumstances, but I don't know if we would require that because if we get financials on a balance sheet, just you know, we're comfortable with that. Um, is exactly right because that, that would probably hinder me from even wanting to apply for the loan. Right. But now, who else am I going to? You know, once it comes, you need that public record at some point. Right. Not right. to get high, but it, right. there's a lot of things that people tax if they have multiple businesses that right. well, I would say right. the majority of the people on a kind of a community volunteer EDA aren't even going to have any. Yeah. Okay, I got the tax return, but they're going to know what. Right. What they're looking at. Well, so, yeah, I mean, so I, I do know that some people are going to say, well, you know, I gave it, you know, well, I gave them my tax return and now all of a sudden my my prop, my taxable value has gone up by 15%. No. Right. Yeah. 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 What is that vast <laughs> government conspiracy? Yeah. yeah. You know, you could ask for, <laughs> I've even lobbied some banks and, you know, lending institutions over the years, you know, you can get a statement that their tax term was filed. You, know, you want to make sure people are in compliance that hey they're not accumulating all these back taxes right. that you know if you want to have something that hey we just need proof that your tax term was filed yeah so that way you're not all of a sudden we go through a foreclosure process and they haven't filed taxes in eight years well right guess who you're behind federal mm -hmm. income taxes so. right yeah exactly I, I I think something like that you know would be yeah because we don't I mean worthwhile if we're not going to be willing to give the loan in the first place for this but if we're right. willing to give the loan after they go through mm -hmm. everything else in the application process <coughs> that's not going to be the thing that tips you over the edge you know so so do we want to keep the covenants kind of pare them down to be much simpler and easier to manage I would simple and easy to manage you know right. obviously we want people in good standing mm -hmm. we want them to use the proceeds for what they're supposed to we want them to stay up on their property taxes here in the city and, and elsewhere. One, just so they don't get behind. Because then, that, then, then they're right. borrowing the money and it's not really helping them out either. So, um, and then job creation would be on a case by case basis depending on the business. And so I, I would say pare it down in okay. some kind of a, then some type of a reporting form that would go with that mm -hmm. to say, Hey, we made the loan in July. Every July, we're going to get an update You're on your information. Get this email from me with this PDF yeah. and yep. fill it out. That's my opinion. Yeah. Well, I think it's good that whoever applies to, they would know that we know. You know that there's things that they, they know that they have to follow through. Right. Yeah. And if somebody. It's not like we forget check. about it as soon as. Right. Money happened. in hand. I guess one other one thing I would maybe consider adding would be something like um, they're gonna agree to let you to let you know the EDA director or some agent of the EDA like go visit the pro you know visit the site once a year or something mm -hmm. just to just make sure they're still still around you know just site, like a site visit just to see how things are going yeah you know and I think good to do anyways just to yeah to stop in and visit them but um you know make sure they're not like cooking meth or something i guess is important so that's whatever you know make sure that it's all good all the plan probably <laughs> won't have a time paying the bills then no or maybe or maybe you're right so that's a good idea maybe. just one person pop in oh. <laughs> All right, are we good? Uh, cast and connections. Um, it's on Thursday. Um, I don't really have any discussion items lined up. It could really be anything from the business side improvement program um, to people interested in hearing about, you know, the future of the revolving loan fund program. It's this Thursday. Yep. Dayton or time and um, Daniels at 9.30. Or they could just bring whatever they want to talk to me with. Has there been a attendance? Um, More or less? Less. I was wondering, instead of doing the comment connections, what if you 
would go to the monthly chamber meeting with all of the yeah. chamber members, mm -hmm. maybe once every other month. I was trying to make no, the, once the meeting month. next week, um, but since it's on a Wednesday around noon, I've got to figure out if I can leave my other community to come for that. But okay. That I might say next week might not be a good one because it's going to be a really tight meeting because oh, okay. have all the the five finalists are going to do a question and answer with yes. the paper. So yep. Yeah, that kind of definitely. Okay, so maybe the question. next one then. I'm thinking even, yeah, a couple months out or something like that. I think you're going to get more people to ask questions mm -hmm. and get involved more than the gaps yeah. in connection. I think so too. And it's, it's an odd time of the morning, you know. It you is. Know, you're, you're getting into the groove of your work. and It is. And, you know, if I go to the chamber meetings, then I can reach out to them with these things more effectively. Absolutely, and more business owners and school mm -hmm. and everybody's there. And more yeah. of a captive audience. Absolutely. Anyway, it's also on the agenda, usually, cast an EDA. Like there's like an EDA report right on the chamber agenda, I read. It, yep, month. and I bring that yeah. back. So, like, but I'm just saying, and like, if Nicholas is, the, you know, like, he can help you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the board meetings, absolutely, if you want to. See, now that I'm finally getting the gist of it, and, you know, I was, like, last month I was able to report back and tell them things that were going on. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're in town. Yeah. Um, that's the hard thing, is you got to pop to other I can towns, figure out my schedule. If it's more consistent, then it would be a lot easier to, and it is. to integrate into my schedule. And it um, is. So... And yeah, I won't yeah. be in Blooming Prairie starting January, okay. so um, th there might be some changes to my schedule. So okay, because I'll be moving to Stewartville, I think. Okay. One day a week. So. Well, I'll tell the board, and we'll definitely. Yeah, because I I'd, I'd like to have more contact with the chamber. Yeah, that would be excellent, and and like you said, going to a board meeting here and there, but just the monthly one with all of the members. Mm -hmm. Even five or ten minutes. So right. Here it is. If you so want to. Any questions, shoot them at me. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Maybe oh. if the chamber was to buy a watch or something. <laughs> you would think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure something, yeah, yeah we could probably get that covered. But, but no, yeah, I'll mention that to them. And <coughs> we'll, uh, it's already November. They already have somebody. It'll probably be December, January. Okay. Possibly even yeah. out towards February, but we'll get you on and I'll find out what's going to work for you. Yeah. That would be excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other business? Anything? No. December meeting items? Um, the revolving ones on the final version. Is there any year end things? Anything else for motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. So carried. Right. So for this Thursday. For the casting connections. Mike. I don't know. Like no one shows up. Do you still show up? Do you do it? Do you put the I mean, I there? usually just show up and drink good coffee, coffee for 30 minutes to do my work. <laughs> okay, well, if you're doing something, It's then definitely not like a waste of my time. Okay, well um, then, cool. Well, then if I'm there alone, okay. or if anybody shows up. But, you right. know, we, I know Stephanie made reservations through the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So, if there's only two, I might as well just do those. And yeah, yeah, off. sounds good. And then I can start maybe changing the way I do community outreach <laughs> Chamber through the chamber. I think you're gonna just yeah, you'll we'll get. That's a lot. Be a yeah, lot of absolutely. And it, everybody knows about it. It's a scheduled event all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it. It's not one way. come to Cassie Connections. Um, <laughs> they're, right. they're business owners, right? So they're gonna usually be at the chamber or hear things from right. the chamber. Right. It's not. I don't think I've had one person from the general community. The public, yeah. 